day you have made, that we should come and say, worship you. We say that when the time has come, the true worship, worship us, we worship you in truth and in spirit. We pray the Lord, our presence here today, by the time we leave here, we will see your presence, we will have your blessings, we will have your interaction, we will not be the same, and the week will be a wonderful week also. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. We thank you that in our midst, you have sent the Spirit of God, your Holy Spirit is here, to guide us through. Let your word come with simplicity, come with understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Let's be our together for God. God is good. 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 We are our last week. We are in the last week of the month of oh, October. 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 Is that right? Yes. Yeah. October. We are in the last week of the month of October. The last Sunday of the last of the month of October. Next Sunday will be the month of November. Okay, already. Folks, <laughs> um, this is this is a very speedy year. That's right. The year is running as if something is chasing after it. But that is what it is. God is doing his work, we have to do our work. Amen. Amen. And we are continuing our studies. The God who conquers. The God who conquers. That was what we are learning in the month of September and October. The God who conquers. And today, last week we had Mr. James Cook talk about the God who conquers anxiety. Anxieties. And today we are talking about the God who conquers physical and spiritual wars. Physical and spiritual wars. Let's look into what it is. Let's look into uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44 to 47. And I read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. I read It is so a natural body, it is raised. A spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, and the last Adam a living giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and, the, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was in the dust of the earth, and the second man is of heaven. <laughs> Folks, this is what Paul is giving, the clarification between the spiritual and the physical. The, the physical came first on earth. God, God did everything in the physical realm. Created things in the physical, created them, but after that, created man in the physical. And so man became physical. Unfortunately, man could not maintain anything stronger because he was physical. It means in the, in the physical realm, things are not very, you can't be powerful when you are in the physical. Understand that? You can never be powerful and strong. When you are in the physical, if you want to be powerful, you must be in the spiritual realm. Amen. Amen. Because things are done in the spiritual before it happens in the physical. Before God created everything, He saw it in the spiritual realm. God is a spirit. He saw it and then brought it in the physical. He saw how the world has, has to be. And so when He saw it, created it, said it, came to be, and it became physical. So anything that happens, you should be aware that we are. And so the first thing I want you to understand that what the Bible is saying about physical and spiritual. Bible is giving us the implication that the, the spiritual, the natural became first, before after that, the spiritual took over. So man 
in natural class, was born into the, into the natural world. Man is a physical being. But for you, before you can be spiritual, you have to be closer to God before you can have that spiritual aspect. So, spiritual body came first. Sorry, natural body came first before it raised the spiritual body. God created everything in the natural. And after he did create everything in the natural, he breathed his spirit on Jesus. That, that natural became both natural and spirit. Man became two. We have both the capacity of being in the, in the natural and the capacity of being in the spiritual. And it is so interesting. We are being bred onto that kind of capacity. Two, the relationship between physical and spiritual therapy. One of the purposes of human body is to serve as a container. God cannot do anything here on earth without our container. So the body, our spirit, human body is very important. That is why you have to see it as, as such. Therefore, we must be mindful to take good care of our body because we take care of the body. It's not just to take care of you, but it take care of you and the spiritual. Your body take care of two things, yourself and the spiritual within you. And so even though you are a natural human being, but you are also a spiritual being. Amen. Amen. So you are so powerful in terms of that capacity. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 7 says, Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am your God, I am holy. I your God, I am holy. God wants us to, even before you can be into the first, into the, not into the first spiritual, you first have to know the importance of who you are. Because we are all natural, natural human beings. We are born into the, into the natural world as natural human beings, but we have the capacity to also contain the spiritual. Why? That is how God created us. He gave us the power of the dual. We are dual human beings of the spiritual and the physical. And so, but before you can step into the spiritual, you must do something. Be holy. Let me go to any person. Be holy. Because I am holy. God wants us to be holy so that we will be able to step into the spiritual. Why should we bother ourselves with the spiritual? And that is where my next thing I want to talk about. Why should we bother ourselves with the spiritual? The inseparable human body and soul and the Holy Spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, Just as God is three in one, Creator, Christ, Holy Spirit, humans were also created in that great capacity. Body, soul, and spirit. And the other time when I was preaching some time ago, I explained that this three component. We, as you see me, I'm the body. But there is two things we can see. My soul and the spirit in me. My soul is what makes me. But the spirit is what makes God in me. Every human being has it. But it's, it, can, it can never be activated if you don't recognize who God is. Your spirit man can never be activated. Your soul is already activated. That makes you a human being. So you have three things running into your body. Your body itself, your container. In fact, without the body, you can't see me. Hello? Hi. Without my body, you can't see me. Without my body, I can't put on suit. I can't touch anything. That is why when you die, your soul cannot touch anything. Your soul is gone. Your body is gone. Your spirit is gone. But when you are alive, your body, the container, you can dress it. Put makeup. You can make it up. You can make and make yourself. That's right. You can get the Gucci bags and Gucci stuff. And 
We went to Las Vegas and we went to a store, designer store. Wow. One bag was costing almost about $15,000. One bag. Like, like what she's holding, like this one. Small little bag. I, I look at the price, then I turn my back. Then <laughs> God have mercy. We need to go out your project. We will sit down with two hours or four. Fifty times, fifty times, the half or one chair with me. Without the body, you cannot get anything. So our body is very important. You see, folks, don't just joke with your body. These three components God has put in you. Your body. Your soul and your spirit. We take it for granted. And so when you wake up, you don't even say thank you, Jesus, for waking me up. We don't care. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not you who wake up. Somebody slept and you wake up. And so let's be very mindful of who God has made you and be proud of it. It's a powerful tool. Paul said, let's look at it again. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5. He says, May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May God, may your whole spirit, soul, body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blameless. Folks, yeah, there are a lot of Christians here on earth. So many, but we are a Christian. But how many of them are, are walking blamelessly? How many? You must count yourself one of those people who are walking yeah, blameless. Yeah, yeah. You must count yourself. I want to walk blameless. It is not easy. It is not a joke. It is a, it's a strong decision. Your, so Paul mentioned three things. Your body, you have been created. That's what that is. He says, May, the, may, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. And fast. Lay more emphasis on the fact that it shouldn't just be ordinary. It should be through and through. May he sanctify you. Folks, be sanctified. Amen. Stay sanctified. Amen. That is no demon that can touch you when you are sanctified. No power. You see, obesity, you are just don't worry. There is no demon, no principality, no powers of darkness can worry you when you sanctify yourself through and through. How do you sanctify yourself through and through? By your conscience. My man is a major body in general. I will never do that. I won't make any mistake and do things anyhow. I will want to sanctify myself. Paul was so conscious about it. Three days he mentioned, but sanctify, so sanctify, and your spirit in you must be sanctified. Amen. It's not a joke, it's a determination. Make up your mind. Amen. And once you do that, there is no, no deeper. Who will have more by you? I'm serious. Once you sanctify yourself, who will have more by you? You will be able to make the mouth. Why? Because you have put yourself in that category. Of allowing the God nature to take over you. Be be over to be a it will come to pass. Hey, you didn't hear me. Everything you say will come to pass. Yeah. So I'm very careful what I say. Because I have determined myself, no matter what it is, whether we hear me, whether we seek me, I will sanctify myself. A question. Determine me, I will never. Amen. And yet because I'm a pastor, no. There are so many pastors who do all kinds of things. Can't I do it? At least I'm more of a I'm going to do it. 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 i there is likely you, you may. It's likely so many people should die. What should I ever do? Claim it should die. 
Daí, daí, eu não sei se está aqui em casa, eu vou mandar um pouco para todos. Vai fazer o nome. Mas, folks, does it come from God? Does it honor God? But this is unfortunately, the whole generation, this is the kind of ministry that blows up. Blows up. You can never hire a if I go that route. But the end of it, I know pastors who did it, their end was terrible. Why well, you can never cheat nature, neither can you cheat God. You are cheating yourself. Cheating yourself. So Paul was so determined. Sanctify you through made a God of peace. Sanctify you through. You can't sanctify yourself. Without the help of God, you cannot. Without the Spirit of God in me, there is no way I'll be able to do what I do. I cannot. You can never sanctify yourself. That is what Paul said. And after he left, May your, may your whole spirit, may your whole spirit, may your whole soul, may your whole body be kept blameless. Because your body can be kept blameless by your soul in the world. Because people see you nice, your body, but what you are thinking, your soul, nobody sees it. So your, your body can be blameless by your body in the world. Do you know that? So your body can be blameless, but your soul may not. You ask for your spirit, it is the spirit is not for you, it is God. So you can't do anything about it. It is God who is in you, who doesn't control you by force. He has given you options, so he starts by you, waiting for you to permit him. If you don't permit God, he will never force you. God will never. Somebody can pray on your behalf. Lord, I pray for my son. Lord, I pray for my, my, my children. That, that, that will work. It will work because somebody is interceding. But without which, if nobody intercedes, nobody says anything, God cannot do anything. It is your option, your power. And so, but the one which you have control is your spirit, sorry, your soul and your body. And so Paul was so determined. Let the whole be kept. Your spirit. Like I said, the spirit, you can't do anything, but your soul and your body, you have control. Let us work diligently. Let us be mindful of the fact that Christ is coming. When he finished, by the time he was finishing the sentence, he added. Straighten up. 
We don't, we don't, we don't shoot like that. <laughs> we saw you with that. We took pain and turn up. We took that turn up. I said, man, hold it strong, man. After we hit you, I said, no, hold what's strong. No one checks it. Folks, so if, if you're not prepared, you cannot go for war. Even in the, in the physical world. And so, I want to draw your mind onto yourself before you can, onto your physical and spiritual human being, before you can talk about war. Because if you don't do that, you will go and you will fail. So let's look into the number four. He says, the temple, the body as a temple of God. In God's creation for humanity, one of the greatest blessings is our physical body as I mentioned earlier. We, we need a physical body to become like our heavenly father. Our bodies are so important that the Lord calls them the temple of God. You are a temple of God. Amen. So come on, folks. Amen. You are a temple of God. Yeah. And you don't want to joke with it anyway. You are a temple. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17 says, Don't you know that your 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 that, that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your in your midst? Don't you know? It's a question for rhetorical question. Don't you know that you are a temple of God? And God God dwells in your body. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and, and you together are that temple. Huh? As you sit, you are a temple of God. You are a temple of God. Glory, glory. Come on, folks, you are a temple of God. Glory. And so, how does a temple of God? Can you come to this church as we classify it as a temple and start cursing? Start stealing because you know it's a church house. If you want to steal, you go out there. So is your body. Your body is a temple of God. It must be kept holy. Holy, folks. You are a temple of God. Amen. And that is why whenever you lift up your hands and you say anything, it comes to pass. Because God has made you as such. And so Paul laid emphasis on the fact that we are a temple. Your holy and well-pleasing offer to God allows you to continually worship Him as you train your flesh to submit to His Lordship, empowering the Holy Spirit to flow through you. Yes, being a living sacrifice involves service, worship, and renewal. You put God first and life gets better. Put God first. Put God first in your life. Folks, putting God first doesn't mean quit your job and say, God has called me. I have quit my job. I want to do that. That is not what it calls God. Calling. That is not what putting God first. Go to your work. Go work, get something, money. And still, wherever you are, put God first. Right. Amen. Amen. Come on, amen. Amen. Means even at work, you can still recognize there is what heart respect other people, respect the work you are doing, do it diligently. No camera watching you, but still do it diligently. That is the concept we are drawing conclusion on. Do it well. Five spiritual warfare. What is the biblical meaning of spiritual warfare? When we say spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare has nothing to do. With physical battles or physical weapon, weaponry. Spiritual warfare is an in inward and outward battle we face against the enemies of God. Spiritual warfare, back again. To understand the battle of spiritual warfare, we need to begin with acknowledging that we are in a war. Battles involve combat between two persons, between factions or enemies or armies. As Christians, we are in a daily spiritual battle. Our physical 
Our, our spiritual battles and warfare are real, even though we cannot physically see the attacker. But we educate ourselves on how the battles are fought and how they impact our lives daily. Amen. We are in a warfare. So we need to make a change. Whether you are from, whether you were, you, you, God created you, you came from heaven straight here on earth, or you were born by a human being, natural human being, you are on a warfare. Right. And let me remind you, that is why sometimes you touch certain things, it doesn't work. Sometimes you dream, has some, some weird dream. Sometimes, I have dreamt before, one time, I will never forget this dream. I will think you were about to get, I was about to get married. The first day, and I had a dream. In fact, when I woke up, I was so scared. I had to talk to one of the deacons that, please, I need you to help me to pray. He said, Kofi, what is the problem? I had a dream. I didn't understand the dream. And all of a sudden, I was in at the place, a, a room. The place was dark, and all I heard was, the guy is here. He has come. Ah. Then I came, I, I, I woke up from the dream. And I'm saying, really? And even I'm copying here, yes, my papa. Why don't I cast my papa? Folks, let's be very, <laughs> it's not easy. I don't know the kind of dreams you've been going through, but I know you have been going through certain things. Sometimes you can't even share. Sometimes you can't even remember. Sometimes you can't even interpret. If you can remember, you, you know the dream, but you, can't, you don't know the meaning of the dream. We are under warfare, spiritual warfare, attackers. We don't see them. I wish I knew who my enemy is. They're not poor all the time. What's that? I know that the young ones are going to wash up for Jews are going to be in the end. They can't even be a fight. But unfortunately, we can't see them. That is why you can't target a vampire. You are targeting, you think your mother, you think your father. No! Don't make that mistake. For all you know, people you are thinking are the ones that love you. So, spiritual matters are very, very difficult to understand. But we are there, we are there. Whether you recognize it, whether you believe it or not, spiritual things are happening. It can come through anything, any area of your life. It can come through when you are schooling, it can come through in your marriage, it can come through your children, it can come through your family, any area at your work, at your area where you have, you have your big house. That area, territorial spirits can work against you, anything. So Paul is saying that we must be aware of that. Why spiritual warfare? It will do us no good to educate ourselves in the battle if we see no reason for the fight. I don't believe it. Well, I don't care. Okay, whether you do care or not, it has no reason. You have no reason to doubt. In the spiritual realm, there is a battle going on regardless of our opinion. We are either victors or victims. In the spiritual realm, battles are going on. We either you are already a loser or a winner. Victor or victim. Hello. Hi. So that's as a, as a Christian, be mindful about this. Say in Yamia, you be Yami. Oh, we are here, oh, we are You can't be ignorant, as Paul said. Don't be ignorant of the device of the evil one. You cannot. You haven't seen it, whether you have seen some before or not. Don't be ignorant. It will never shakabe, rakatababa, in the name of Jesus. Not a prayer in your spirit. Do it. For you don't know what is against you. They are there. We are under the warfare of the spiritual realm we can't see. So Paul is advising we shouldn't be ignorant of the devices of the evil one. Let me continue my, 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 my studies. He says, you should acknowledge that in the spiritual war, Jesus has already conquered the battle. He has. 
And so, I, I'm happy you are asking the question. But, Pastor, when you say Jesus has conquered the world, why should we fast and pray? Why? If Jesus has conquered the world, why should we worry? Why should I pray? After all, I'm a Christian. Jesus has conquered the world for me. Listen. If that is so, why do we have to engage ourselves in spiritual warfare? The war is already won. The war is already won. However, if you choose to ignore or not believe in the spiritual realm, we will find ourselves confused, frustrated, and quenching the peace that God has promised to each one of us. Listen carefully. When you ignore spiritual things, you will get yourself confused. Why have you always that there is nothing wrong with you. You haven't been fired from work, but you, you can think. You are, you are not at peace. You get confused sometimes. You get worried. All of a sudden, you are not happy. You should know that there is an attack. You shouldn't be ignorant. There is an attack that goes on. And then we keep, keep, I keep on to, to say that just educating ourselves about spiritual realm is the half, the fight, and God gives us everything else we need to be victorious with the other half. Just recognize that there is I am in the warfare. You see, when in the mental world, mental psychologists will tell you that when somebody is mad and the person has, is not aware he or she is mad, the madness will take a long time. He's not awake. His environment is normal. Did you get him? Normal. Only you got him. Normal. Or say she's sick. In fact, somebody got somebody wanted to get some money, and instead of um, he went for ritual, and the ritual they used him instead, and he became mad. He, I mean, I, I, I watch a YouTube. A very popular guy. I forgot his name. He's testifying how oh, when he got mad, he saw bread on the floor. He looked very neat, very decent in the gutter. <laughs> but it's not easy. You see, his mental world is off. So everything that comes into your picture is neat. When we see it as that, you see, gutter, you show, but, 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 to send a bottle of water. Folks, why? He's up. And that's, that's exactly what happens. In the spiritual realm, if you joke, if you play, you, there, there's a need for you to recognize I am in the warfare. Folks, that's my last point. I am in the warfare. Remember, I am in the warfare. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Why do you submit? You submit because you know there is a problem. Recognize there is a problem. Folks, this don't work. Whether you see things or you don't see, whether you have a dream or not, whether, whether your environment is nice or not, whether everything is going fine or not, recognize the need for you to be aware of the spiritual warfare. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, Genesis, verse 1, 41 says, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing and the flesh, and the flesh is willing. When did Jesus say this? He said it when he was the, about to die. He was about to die. On the cross. On the cross, about to die. So we step this, this step gives me my final point. The, the benefits of fasting. Studies discovered that intermittent fasting boosts working memory in animals and verbal memory in adult humans. Heart health. Intermittent fasting improved blood pressure and resting heart rates as well as other heart related measurements. That's right. You see, folks, the fasting we are fasting is not a joke. 
you, you think you think it's just oh, Pastor, you know, someone the a man that he and then you are asking us to fast. No, the fasting is scientifically very good for you. Science has proven it. You don't have to be seen always chewing your mouth. Stop it. And the power is out, and you are out, and you are out. Stop. You know, now I've developed the concept. I don't eat until just one day. Just one, one, one food a day. Morning, forget it. Afternoon, forget it. Evening. Sometimes we deal with tea lunch and we are. That we need to do once a day. Since, since last year, I started it. I, I started gradually. Why? Because I want to, number one, be able to fast food. Number two, I want to maintain my weight. Mm, that's right. I must maintain my weight for health reasons and for my own good. Says you have to see me. Why am I here now? Because why are you truffle? You can't, you can't run, even though you are not truffle, you can't even run for 50 meters. You can't. See, sometimes go walking. Go walking. Sometimes go running. Do some little trotting. Sometimes work. I like working. In fact, I'm doing some back, backyard work in my house. Oh man. I started far back in April. I started far back in April. I'm still on it. So imagine what I'm doing. When I finish, I'm going to gather all my grandkids. Yeah. I will take them to my backyard. Yeah. Yeah. And then we we'll see. We'll have fun. Beautiful fun. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's going to take me through December or January, but I'm working on it. I'm working hard. Every week I can put certain things together. Folks, it gives me strength. It gives me, and yet it's, not, it's, not, it's not about fun. No. I want to exercise, beat myself, because from her, who to kill, such Air condition, we 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 we. I'm We air condition, I Heat, heat, heat. Air condition, what? Why are you sweating? Nothing giving you sweat. Nothing. Nothing giving you exercise. You come back. I can go, 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 go and touch my head. That's right. Why? Me, me, na kabu bi. Folks, you don't, you don't become a Christian. And it's all about Christ. Forget, don't make that big mistake. Christ has done his work. He has given you salvation. Your work is to fight and make yourself better. Christ never said go to him. No, I mean, of his rules, of it, and they shall go to redeem you and that they shall grasp him. No, it's a desire of the flesh. So why don't I make my desire of the flesh? Work hard. Exercise. War. This is part of, you see, when you do that, by, by natural means, you are killing some diseases. That's right. You are killing. You don't even pray. You are killing some diseases away from your, your system. By natural means. And then you only come to the physical. You pray through and Christ take over that which you can't see. Amen. Because you can't even exercise. The true work of disease is bad because it's, it's an orchestration of the devil to bring you a disease. It is now your turn to pray. There's a reason why we do warfare. The warfare we do is we are doing warfare because I cannot see what needs to be seen. I can't. So I have to, I mean, initiate. I have to trigger the spirit man in me. I have to involve my Christ. You remember what happened to the disciples? One time as they were traveling, they were in the boat. They were all in the boat. We had that. I had that three, two, two weeks ago. Yeah, three weeks ago. I use it as one of my, uh, one of our fasting prayer uh, topic. They were all in the boat, and Jesus in the cushion, sleeping, relaxed, and the 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 the, the, the storm was tossing the boat back and forth, just about to 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 somersault and kill all of them. And then they realized they came to their senses. We have Jesus in our midst. Why don't we tell him? Jesus was still sleeping. He wasn't sleeping. He wasn't. He was awake. Awake. 
in his soul and his eyes were closed. Pretending to sleep. He wasn't sleeping. Christ never sleeps. God never sleeps nor slumber. Let's be mindful about it. Our Christ never sleeps nor slumber. God never sleeps nor slumber. God, Christ wasn't asleep. He was watching if the disciples would be aware. They will recognize his presence. If you don't recognize the presence of Christ in your spirit, you will never have him work on your behalf. You have this in your, in your, in your mind. Always remember that I have Christ in this problem. Why should I worry? Why don't I wake him up? Why don't I tell Christ I am being swallowed by the storm? And that's exactly what the disciples did. Hey, Christ, don't you care? He cares. Who will be able to sleep that sound, that deep, when a storm like that is going on? Nobody. And the number of circumstances you can't. Ah, as for you, what? What did you come back? Now, darling, there is no more tempt. Hey, hey, give me, give me. Hey, the name of Jesus. 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 Okay. 
find a walk, a spiritual walk. Join. Get yourself in. It's not easy. It has never been easy since the time of John the Baptist. The kingdom of God suffered violence and violence taken by force. You have to take it by force.
Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers. 